So do you think it's possible to travel around the globe while you're teaching English? Yes, it is. So if you haven't been to my channel before, my name is Mary. I'm a qualified English teacher and I'm very proud to say that I've been to 33 countries so far while working with international education. Well, all places are different and somehow fascinating, but I do have my list of favorite countries. So I would say that my top five are South Africa, Colombia, Australia, Namibia, in India. I'm currently living in Spain and I really love it but I have to admit that I cannot wait to see what the future has in store for me. So if you've got a suggestion for a destination for me to go next, please leave your comment below. In this video you're going to hear unique and inspiring stories of ESL teachers. I've gathered a bunch of amazing teachers from different places and they're going to share with us their experience teaching abroad. So how did they get a job? How did they feel when they were there? And what are the tips that they've got for you, a teacher that is planning to go and teach in another country? My advice is go and grab your popcorn and your cup of tea and here you have them. Hey, my name is Brad. Uh... I was an ESL teacher in China for four years, and wow, I mean, changed my life. Um, I started off with just getting an associate's degree, and then I got my TEFL certifications from the International TEFL Academy in Chicago. A uh, pretty dope course. I would definitely recommend that one simply because they're really good with job placement. So, I mean, they hooked me up with some recruiters in uh, China right away, and I mean, within a week, I had a couple interviews on Skype, and I was on a plane over there. I sold my car and bought a plane ticket and just uh, decided to take a whole new trajectory with my life, which ended up being monumental in regard to, like, how I ended up and the experiences and adventures that I had. It was, oh, cool. Uh, so, man, before I moved to China, I was literally living in North Carolina in America, and I, I hardly had enough money to even... Uh, you know, pay my bills in the winter time. It was really cold, and I would I would drink whiskey and, and sit by my oven with it open just to get warm. And then I'm teaching in China, making loads of money. It's half the price of living. The wages are doubled, and it's just like boom, like zero to hero, dude. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I ended up uh, marrying a cool girl that I met there and uh, moved to Tahiti. And so now I'm living on a paradise island all because of teaching English. And it just takes you across the world and brings you to places that you would never expect. And it's all just because you're, you know, following the adventure. But really, people always say hard work is what pays off. But I honestly think it's taking risks. That's what pays off. When you take a big risk, it seems like life rewards you. And then ah, so many opportunities just keep coming. But um, yeah, I was teaching day by day in China. Uh, first at a primary school, then at training centers. Then eventually I had you know, met so many people that I was just did private tutorings for like rich families and their students. And I would just go from house to house. And I would, I mean, it wasn't like a lot, but it was cool. It was like 40 bucks an hour, just go house to house. Yeah, now I'm teaching in Tahiti. I still teach online. I'm running an ESL blog. You should check it out, eslwild.org. Got lots of cool information on where to get online jobs, where to get your TEFL certifications, tips, and uh, platforms, how to collect your own students, and tons of wild, crazy travel stories that are hilarious and just nuts. The only advice I would give you is save up enough money for like the first month while you're there, depending on what country you go to. You could also check out my blog, ESL Wild. I got all 10 cheapest countries, uh, 10 best paying countries, all sorts of stuff you could check out. But um, uh, learn a little bit of the language, but just wing it, honestly, man. Go to the country, wing it, and see what happens because having the adventure is just so much cooler, man. You don't want to meticulously plot everything and then I don't know, man. It just doesn't seem as fun that way. The adventure is cool when there's a mystery involved with it. You don't know where you're going to end up, you know? And, man, I wondered before I went where I was going to end up. Because before I left, I had talked to another ESL teacher who was teaching uh, in Mongolia. And he ended up meeting a guy in the airport while traveling who asked him to work 
for National Geographic because he looked really cool and rugged. They wanted to use him in their hiking photos. Then they, they brought him out to Alaska. He ended up living in Alaska. You don't know what's going to happen. Just go do it and see what happens, man. It's going to be cool regardless. It's better than staying at home. <laughs> go do your adventure. See what happens. And I guarantee you probably won't regret it, man. Life does reward the big risks. Hello, my name is Lee from Enigmatic Learning. Well, I'm 27 years old. I've been teaching English for about four years now, online and offline. I am from Northern Ireland. And yes, it is possible to teach English with a Northern Irish accent. And I'm also CELTA qualified. So I have a CELTA qualification and I have a degree in sports coaching. The cool thing about teaching English abroad, you are going to meet so many different people from so many different walks of life. My English journey started in 2017 on a summer camp. I decided to dip my toe into teaching English and to figure out if it was for me and if I could do it. So I was in charge of running the sport activities, which is easy for me with my coaching degree and coaching experience. But I was not prepared to dress up as a dragon. So I was the camp mascot and I had to welcome the new students as they were transitioning from their parents' arms to uh, two weeks with strangers with strange accents. So we had dance-offs, I high-five kids, I'd do the worm with some headphones in while I was listening to music because trying to do that without music was impossible. Um, but yeah, it was so warm and it was a good, good sign of what was to come because that highlights something that's very important about teaching English abroad and it's getting outside your comfort zone. It's going to happen a lot. After that experience in the summer camp, I went back the next year to teach on the same summer camp and then I went to an academy after. Working in academies in Spain is one of the most common ways for people to teach English uh, abroad, certainly in Europe, definitely in Spain. And basically academies are private schools um, for students to go to after their public school. So it's a specific language school, usually in the evenings from let's say four until nine in the evening. We'll be working with students of all ages and all levels, as well as adults. My first academy was in Extremadura, uh, Spain. It was an amazing experience and I was lucky to work with an amazing boss at Celtic Academy in Extremadura. And the town I was living in, it was pretty famous because it had this old town within it where Game of Thrones was filmed. I've actually never watched an episode of Game of Thrones. I apologize. Um, so you can probably tell that a lot of my experience has been in Spain, but I've also worked with people all around the world from Portugal, France, Poland, Russia, Ukraine and Bulgaria. I went to Bulgaria in 2019 and the reason behind that was strange. Most people research the places they're going and look into the culture, the city they're going. Mine was a why not? And um, I'd highly recommend learning a little bit of the language before you go to a place. I learned enough Bulgarian to be polite and say please and thank you, order a beer, order food. And yeah, just the basics to be friendly with the locals. Um, my language development in Spanish as well grew as I learned some, I would say, touristy Spanish. So again, enough to get by in Spanish. And I'm now going back to basics. I'm currently in France working online, but I'm looking to do the same thing. Traveling around the different cities and the country you're living in is one of my favorite things. I had the opportunity to travel around many different cities in Spain. I particularly like going to like old towns, seeing the old architecture and the old way of living. And I also had the opportunity to do that in Bulgaria. So I was teaching by the sea, not too bad, right? I would go down after school, get a local beer at the smallest bar to ever exist, and they would fry some local fish that they just caught and uh, some fresh fish and yeah living the dream <laughs> it's not bad but beside that small area i was in there's like a party area so yeah that's another thing that teaching english abroad allows you to do allows you to travel around these different places so i told you at the start about my northern irish accent well i remember one time in spain i was teaching my students and we must have i must have been teaching them for about six seven months 
everything was fine. They were about seven to nine years old. One of my favorite classes. I love that age group. Um, and <laughs> another teacher observed one of my classes. I was like, Lee, they've adopted the Northern Irish accent. I was like, what are you talking about? How have they adopted the Northern Irish accent? He's like, listen to them. So that teacher got them all to count to 10. And it was like, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> they adopted the Northern Irish eight. And there we have it. My experience teaching English abroad in a nutshell. If you have any questions or you want to see some of the work I am doing, you'll find me at enigmaticlearning.com or Enigmatic Learning on YouTube or Instagram. All right, best of luck. Hey, my name is Hugh. I'm an Australian ESL teacher and I've been teaching for 15 years in Jakarta, which is about there. And I just wanted to share a little bit about my experience with those of you who are planning to maybe get into ESL teaching and perhaps travel overseas. I went to get my qualification in Australia. I got an Australian uh, recognized qualification with Teach International, which is a group that operates out of Brisbane. Uh, after I finished all the training, they gave us placement in an English center. Well, they gave me placement in an English center in Melbourne and they assessed my teaching after that. So by the end, when I got my certificate, I actually felt like I can do this job, all right, which is really important. So I didn't get much success calling, uh, cold calling different centers and schools and trying to get jobs that way. So I just bit the bullet. I bought a ticket to Jakarta, went on a two month visa and I started knocking on doors. Within a few weeks, I had a job and you'll be surprised about how easy, very easy it is to find work. Um, teaching English overseas. You do have to be a little bit uh, careful because there are some shoddy employers. Um, I was lucky I started off with one of the bigger employers here, uh, English First. So you know they, they may not be perfect but they have a lot of experience um, hiring teachers and I learned uh, how to teach many different levels and so I got um, a great scope of experience uh, through that work and that helped give me a platform to work from for the rest of my career. Right, so after teaching at EF for a little while, uh, I got headhunted by a, a couple of schools actually. There were a few schools offering me work and they wanted to greatly increase my salary, basically double it, uh, if I would come over and work for them. And they even paid out English first to let me go. They said, no, we wanna, we wanna take him before this particular contract's finished. Uh, we're going to give you money to let him go. So that's how in demand uh, English teachers are. And, and so it's really quite special. Anyway, when I was working or uh, teaching at schools, I quickly became an English coordinator. I got given more and more responsibilities to you know, set up the syllabus, to train other teachers. The reason for this was because I could actually get really decent results with the students and I took my career seriously. And you'll be surprised how easy it is to be able to teach English well if you're serious about being a good teacher. It's not that hard to work, work out in the beginning. Now, of course, it's gonna be a, a constant thing that you improve on throughout your teaching career. Year by year, you're gonna become a better and better teacher, right? But at least in the beginning, don't be afraid. You can make a big impact on these kids. The second year teaching uh, in my career, I was already an English coordinator at a school. I had set up a program, immersion program for the students there. And all of the children in that program were speaking within four to eight months, speaking English confidently. They had basically made English their language. I mean, of course it's not perfect, it's not complete but they had taken ownership of the language and they were using it on a day-to-day -day basis. They were using it with each other when they were playing after school, when they went home. It was just amazing to see and very satisfying. So you have that immense satisfaction helping a lot of children who may have not had the help before. You'll be surprised that uh, maybe only 5% of people who study a foreign language become successful in that foreign language. So the help that you're giving, if you are an effective teacher, is immense. 
and you're going to be able to change a lot of lives with that. But on the flip side with your career, the sky's the limit as well. Um, now for the past few years I've been teaching online. I switched from teaching at schools to having my own teaching practice and teaching clients directly from around the world online. It's been again very satisfying. I've learned about a lot of different cultures from all around the world. I feel like every day I'm traveling somewhere new by talking to you know, students from all around the world. And uh, re regarding your, how we say, income, there's no limit really. You, you, you make it yourself. If you want to continue working for schools or institutes, you can tweak your career so you're more specialized, so you're working for particular kinds of schools that can afford to pay more, and you can work on your career that way. Um, if you're looking to set up your own practice, you can also design it so you're serving the kind of clients that you want to serve, who can afford to pay for a premium service, or you could go for scale, you could set up you know, online courses where there's a lot of people that join and you, you teach larger uh, classes, you have people working under you. You can do so many things with this profession. So if you are interested in helping people improve their English, and you do want to make this into a career, it is pretty amazing. Because you can not only make a difference, you can make a good income, you can have the flexibility of being wherever you want in the world. You want to be in Indonesia, Russia, Korea, anywhere you want to be, you can make it happen. So I encourage you all to get stuck into it. And um, I'm looking forward to hearing any success stories or any great experiences that you have as well. You can get in contact with me at mr.mungus on Instagram. That's M-U-N-G-U-S. And uh, I look forward to hearing from some of you. Okay. My name's Zach. I'm from the UK. And I live in the southwest of England in a place called Exmouth, which has a beach. So I live just here by the park, but I usually go to the beach every day. So I did my CELTA 10 years ago. And for the first five years, I predominantly just did summer school work and also covering for teachers if they were off during the holidays. And then about five years ago, I started working for a company called English in Action. And they send teachers to schools mostly in Europe. So I think they also operate in Japan and maybe Russia. So my first contract was for three weeks they're always mini contracts. So I've done one week, two week, and three week, but some teachers do stay out for longer. And you move to a different school every week. So I was sent to Austria for two weeks, but at two different schools, and then to Italy to teach in a school near Venice for one week. The recruitment process was very straightforward. I already knew a teacher who I was working with in England and he told me about this company and that I might like the travel and they said they were recruiting. So I had a telephone interview and they just chatted through my CV and then they told me that I would need to go to an induction in Bristol, I think, but I couldn't make it. I was busy on the date they gave me. So they just said, you can have the job anyway. So I had never been to Austria before. It's not somewhere I'd thought about going on holiday or anything. My first impressions of the country were really positive. I liked how well organized everything was. I found it really easy to get around. I really liked the food. I actually found my favorite restaurant in the world in Vienna. The routine I was in was getting up quite early, start teaching at eight o'clock. So there's six lessons a day. Lesson one, two, and three is from the book that they're working through. Lesson four is a free lesson for the teachers to do whatever they think suits the students best. Lesson five is project work, where they work on a project that they then present to their parents on the Friday. And then lesson six is working on a show. So they put on a performance, like a murder mystery or a Got Talent show. It's usually quite funny and they work on it Monday to Thursday and then on Friday you have the final rehearsal and then they perform it in front of their parents, in front of the whole school actually, usually on a big stage. It depends what sort of school you're in, but usually they give you the kind of school hall to perform it. So there's hundreds of people and it's really good. It's really good for their confidence because they have to do it in English obviously. So the Friday is really fun. 
So next month will be my five year anniversary since I started working for English in Action. And on my first contract, I actually met my girlfriend and we now have a daughter together. I think the whole experience made me a much stronger teacher, especially in terms of classroom management, because it was my first time teaching monolingual classes because I was going out to them, the same nationality, the same language, and that they would potentially just translate or speak in their own language. So I had to develop stronger classroom management techniques to deal with that. It also gave me a lot of ideas to steal and implement at my local language school when I became the academic manager there. I would definitely recommend this experience if you are in it for the experience. So if you want to travel around and you don't really mind where you're going to be each week, then it's perfect. They provide the accommodation, they give you money towards your food, they pay for your travel, but the wages are not great. So everything's pretty much paid for and organized by them, but you won't make a lot of money. Some teachers do that in the morning and then they stay at the hotel or the accommodation and teach online privately or through another company or whatever. But some teachers do both simultaneously so they can make a bit more money. My tips for new teachers who want to go abroad are plan for monolingual classes. So you need to work on your classroom management techniques because some of the ideas that you might have been using where the students come to you and you've got a mixed bag of nationalities, that's not going to apply. So definitely consider classroom management. Another tip is make sure you understand any paperwork and bureaucracy involved. So I've also taught in Spain for a different company and I had a complete nightmare, just days on end going back and forth to offices, trying to get paperwork stamped and put in place and setting up a bank account. So that was really tricky. I was working for a UK company with English in Action, so everything was being paid into my UK account. And we were in the EU back then, so there were no issues. And my final tip is to pack light, but don't forget any essentials. So for the first contract I did, that, that I've been telling you about, I took a huge suitcase full of everything I thought I would need and then some. I think I had three or four pairs of shoes because I knew that I had the afternoons and weekends free. Um, I think I packed enough to not need to do any washing and it was just really cumbersome and irritating lugging this huge suitcase around each week to a different school. So I then got a backpack and I just fit everything in there. I highly recommend teaching abroad because it gives you a completely different perspective, I think. There's something about you being the foreigner in another country where you're much more put in their shoes. So when the students come here, um, I feel like you don't experience it the same way. So when you're spending your afternoons and evenings and weekends trying to ask for tickets and directions and eating in restaurants and going shopping, you're having to do it in their language. So then when the students are trying to speak English, during lesson time, you really understand what it's like. Since then, I've been teaching online and I started a YouTube channel called Coastline English, where I'm sharing my resources for teachers to check out, but the public videos are aimed at students. Hi everyone, I'm Rosie. I'm from the northeast of England, as you'll be able to tell from my accent. Um, so yeah, I've been teaching for about seven years, which seems to have gone really, really quickly. Um, must just be because I love teaching so much, <laughs> which I do. Um, so when I first started teaching, I actually did a PGC in England, which is just the teaching qualification. Um, but I do also have a level five TEFL, which was really helpful. I did that with eye to eye TEFL, just online. Um, I have a degree and a master's, but neither of those are necessary to teach abroad. So when I first started teaching, I was teaching GCSE English. So I just always knew I wanted to teach, I wanted to teach English. Um, but then I randomly, randomly applied for a job teaching ESOL and absolutely loved it. Um, so that's English for speakers of other languages, loved it. And um, yeah, that really sparked my interest. So that same summer that I got that job, I went and did a summer camp in Italy and I'd love to say I absolutely loved it and it was a great experience but it just wasn't at all what I was expecting. Um, it was 
crazy. It was like really dramatic and intense. And I just don't think how about that life really. So the next summer I went to Bangkok to visit my friend. Um, she's teaching English there, she still is now. Um, and yeah, that was really good. So I shadowed some of her lessons and then taught some of my own. And I really enjoyed that. And I feel like it helped with my teaching development. It wasn't a paid thing or anything. I just did it for my own, you know, my own benefit an experience which I do not regret at all. Um, the classes there were massive which was really cool but something I found really awkward was that it was like the norm to teach with a microphone and I don't know why that just made me feel super uncomfortable um, but no it was fun you do get used to it and the students are just really cool as they are everywhere to be honest and then I went to Italy to teach so that hiring process was actually really easy I'd met somebody at the summer camp and he just messaged our group chat and was like, somebody I know is recruiting for school in Italy. Is anybody interested? And I was like, absolutely. I had a Skype interview with the owner of the school. And then a few days later, I had a Skype interview with her and her mom. And it was like super informal. The hiring process was super easy. The school itself was just a tiny little school, literally just an office above a supermarket. Um, and it was in the very south of Italy, in a tiny little town, which I would say definitely has its pros and cons. So it was fun because it was like proper Italy, you know, a tiny town, really authentic. Um, but it was also, I think it's more difficult to get used to, you know, living somewhere else when it's such a tiny place, like a village and everybody knows each other and they are gonna look at you when you're out and about. Um, um, but yeah, so that was really fun. The students were all, amazing like the first day that i taught one class a student wrote me a letter telling me she loved me and they were just lovely because the relationship with italian students is much more like um i guess friendly and relaxed than we would have in england and that's something that i really like about it because i just i'm a friendly person so i really like that um i was teaching adults teenagers children and then i had some people who were doing like the b1 b2 c1 for cambridge and that was great as well because that's when you really get into you know your grammar and stuff like that um, and you're almost having like a normal English um, conversation so yeah that was great um, and I'm now back in my hometown which you know it's nice to see people but I can't wait for my next experience abroad um, but yeah in the meantime I've been teaching online which is amazing so I looked at a few online companies and was shocked at the rate of pay um, and the lack of flexibility and that kind of thing. So I started advertising myself, I've got an Instagram um, and I found quite a few students. So mostly Italian, I must just love Italians and um, Spanish people as well. And I really love working for myself. Like I would have never thought that I would set up my own business, be finding my own students and teaching online. I just can't believe I'm doing it and I'm loving it. Um, so yeah, my advice overall is to absolutely do it. Like go abroad, go and teach abroad. It'll change you for better. Like I have generalized anxiety disorder, not ashamed to admit that at all. Um, and I just think these experiences were terrifying, but I'm terrified of everything like of being at home in my own country. So going abroad and proving to yourself that you can do that and you know that you can meet loads of different people from different places and you can go fly on your own and you know just live in a different country it's an amazing experience you will not regret it um, I would actually say it's almost a cure for anxiety for myself and um, my one tip would probably be to maybe work for a more established school so even though it was fun working for a little school with just one other person um, it definitely did have its disadvantages so just be careful, take some savings with you if you don't want to work for an established school. Um, but just 100% absolutely go for it and you will not regret it. <laughs> Hello, my name is Catherine and I'm an Australian citizen currently living in Greece, teaching English to Greek students as a second language. In 2010, I graduated from Macquarie University, Sydney, Australia. And so I'm a holder of a Bachelor of Education in Early Childhood Education and I actually decided to move to Greece and um, since I'm a holder of a Bachelor of Education I was able to get my permit as an ESL teacher here in Greece. Regarding my experience working in a language school, in an English language school here in, in Greece, 
Uh, I have to say that my first E wasn't, you know, what I expected. I felt that there was, you know, this support system wasn't just enough for me. And as a, as a new teacher, you know, it's different working in a childcare and uh, I guess it's different <laughs> teaching the language to someone who doesn't know, you know, it's very different. So um, the support system wasn't there. And so you, you pretty much feel like you're, you know, you're on your own, uh, but uh, at the end of the day, it makes you, you know, uh, really work for it and figure it out yourself. And at the end of the day, um, I did manage to, you know, just stand on my own two feet. You know, 11 years down the track now, looking back, I didn't really do such a bad job. I was, I was pretty good actually. <laughs> so, um, you never know how that might work, but it's not, you know, it, it, that was my experience. I guess it's, um, it might be different in a different school. The learning of the language here is very um, exams orientated. So at the end of the six year or seven year or eight year journey, language learning journey of the students, um, they have to take or have to um, take the B2 level exam or the C2 level exam. It's um, later on in their life, it is a requirement in the public sector mostly um, and, and the private sector, but mainly the public sector. It's a requirement that they show a certification of B2 level and uh, most jobs it's C2 level. So. Um, the students are taught in a way that um, the goal is the, the certificate and not necessarily the learning of the language. Um, this is, is, is changing slowly, so we are trying to focus more on um, project-based learning and um, listening skills and uh, communication skills speaking skills um, so that the the students are actually able to communicate and speak the language rather than just answer multiple multiple questions uh, multiple choice questions um, also the following year I actually opened up my own um, language school with my mother uh, and um, we've been teaching in our own school uh, for the past 10 years now, going on to 11. And um, I think that first experience has helped me become a better uh, director and um, has given me all the, the motivation to help my teachers and you make sure that they have got all the support they need and um, inform them about extra seminars that they could take. Um, and make sure that the collaboration is there and the support is there. Well. Brush up your grammar before every single lesson, especially if you are teaching higher levels or the Cambridge exams or IELTS, different exams. Make sure you brush up on your grammar. And the last thing, probably the most important one, is have fun with it, you know? A lot is going to be expected of you in TEFL, but you can do it and don't forget that you're not at home, stuck in a 9-to-5 job, you're out working with people and that everything you do really does have a positive effect on the students that you meet. I've met students in lots of countries now and every single one of them is really happy for the lessons that I had with them. If you've made it this far, thanks for watching. Thanks to all the brilliant teachers that participate in this video. Don't forget to check their channels out and to give me a thumbs up. Thank you. Bye. Happy teaching.